Hello, St. Andrews, and welcome to episode three of Chancel Chats. I'd like to begin by just uh, briefly reminding you about the events uh, that will take place here at St. Andrews this week. On Wednesday evening at six o'clock, we continue our midweek Lenten book study. We're taking a look at Marcus Borg's classic work, Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time. Last week, we had over 20 people here. We enjoyed a wonderful soup and bread supper, a great uh, engaging conversation. So um, uh, we encourage you, even if you haven't signed up, we have extra books. There's plenty of room around the table, so please join us uh, this Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock as we continue that book study. Uh, Thursday morning, we gather at 7 a.m. for our traditional early morning Lenten Eucharist, followed by a wonderful continental breakfast in the parish house immediately following the service. And then looking ahead to Holy Week, we're planning to, to introduce a new event. Uh, as far as I know, it's never been done here at St. Andrews, and that is a children's version of the Stations of the Cross on Good Friday morning at 10 a.m. Now, this program will be specially designed for children in, age, in grades one through seven. So if you have a child that is in that age range and they'd like to participate, please call the church office sometime in the next couple of weeks and make a reservation. We're very excited about um, this opportunity. We'll meet in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. on Good Friday morning, and the children will follow the footsteps of our Lord as he makes his way toward the cross on Good Friday. I do have a couple of concerns that I'd like to share with you this morning. Uh, first of all, our uh, plan to put together our own pictorial directory here at St. Andrews. I spoke with Chris Carroll, our parish administrator, earlier this week, and she told me that so far we've only had five photographs submitted. So uh, we need your help if this is going to be successful. So please submit your individual or family photographs so that after Easter we can put together our own uh, in-house pictorial directory. The second concern is um, uh, our plan to establish a Sunday school class for children ages three through five. Now you've been hearing me talk about how over the last three years we've wel welcomed 30 children uh, into the church uh, through the sacrament of baptism. And when these children were baptized, we as a Christian community, a church community, made a promise to the children and to their parents that we would provide opportunities for these children to grow and mature in their uh, Christian faith, the faith of their baptism. And so we're hoping to put together a, a class, Sunday school class specifically um, geared toward these children. But so far we've had no volunteers to serve as either teachers or teacher's aides. So without your help, we'll, we'll be unsuccessful and, uh, keeping the promise that we made to these children and to their parents. So if you have an interest, if you've been thinking about, praying about the possibility of serving, please contact Lucy Adams or speak with me. We'll provide some information. Our plan is to put together a team of volunteer teachers and teachers' aides so that no one will have to uh, do this every single Sunday. But we need your help if we're going to be successful. Um, Someone asked a question this week, and I'd like to address that question uh, this morning. Uh, the question was, why don't do we use the wooden cross during uh, the Lenten season rather than the more ornate uh, um, metal cross that we use the rest of the year? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, as you know, Lent is a penitential season, which means that the mood and the atmosphere during the liturgy in Lent is a little different than it is the rest of the year, a little more restrained, a little more quiet and subdued. And somehow it seems that the wooden cross fits more appropriately in that mood and atmosphere of Lent. But even more important than that, the wooden cross is a powerful, visible reminder of the cross on which our Lord and Savior suffered and died for our salvation. And so during Lent, we reflect uh, on that cross and the, the price that was paid uh, for our salvation. So the wooden cross is a reminder uh, during the Lenten season uh, of, um, of that sacrifice that was made for us. This past week, I read an interesting article in the Christian Century about a conversation between Pope Francis, the head of the Roman Catholic Church, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, the head of the Anglican Communion, and the heads of the Coptic Christian Church and the Greek Orthodox Church. 
Apparently, they've been talking with each other about establishing a set date for Easter so that Christians around the world would all celebrate the great feast of the resurrection on the same day. I think it's a wonderful idea, a modest proposal for Christian unity that we all celebrate Easter uh, on the same day. And my suggestion would be that we celebrate Easter on the first Sunday after the 15th of April when we submit our annual tax return. Uh, so, uh, something to think about, very interesting. Uh, the gospel reading for this coming weekend is taken once again from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, and this week we'll be hearing Jesus' parable of the fig tree. Now, I think the fig tree parable is a great description of what I call the, the severe mercy of our God, the severe mercy of our God, and that's the theme that we'll be pursuing in the homily this weekend. So we hope to see you and your family in church uh, this weekend, either at the Saturday evening service at 5 p.m. or Sunday morning at 8 a.m. or at 10 a.m. as we approach the halfway point of our uh, annual Lenten journey toward Easter. So uh, we'll talk again next week. I hope you all have a blessed week, and um, please don't hesitate to call if we can be of any personal or pastoral assistance.